Well, hello there. This is episode number 66. We're reading numbers 17 and 18. The definitive statement on the libations that God requires for his satisfying aromas. There is the thinning of the herd that continues with rebellions and plagues. And there's this man who's collecting the wood on the Sabbath is like a prelude to the rebellion that Korah ends up establishing. And 250 people die by fire and, I don't know, an entire portion of a tribe, I guess, gets swallowed up with an earthquake. So what is it that is happening to Moses for all of this to sort of be happening? This is like extra torment. It doesn't seem right, but it does certainly seem familiar. Let's pray. God, thank you for this book. It is an exciting story. I'm asking that you stay with us as we continue the reading. Amen. Number 17. Hashem spoke to Moses, saying, Say to Elisar, son of Aaron the Kohen, and let him pick up the fire pans from amid the fire, and he should throw away the flame, for they have become holy. As for the fire pans of these sinners against their souls, they shall make them hammered out sheets as a covering for the altar, for they offered them before Hashem, so they became holy. They shall be for a sign to the children of Israel. Elisar the Kohen took the copper fire pans that the consumed ones had offered and hammered them out as a covering for the altar, as a reminder to the children of Israel, so that no alien who is not of the offspring of Aaron shall draw near to bring up the smoke of incense before Hashem that he not be like Korah in his assembly, as Hashem spoke about him through Moses. The entire assembly of the children of Israel complained on the morrow against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of Hashem. And it was when the assembly gathered against Moses and Aaron, they turned to the tent of meeting, and behold, the cloud had covered it, and the glory of Hashem appeared. Moses and Aaron came before the tent of meeting. Hashem spoke to Moses, saying, Remove yourselves from among this assembly, and I shall destroy them in an instant. They fell on their faces. Moses said to Aaron, Take the fire pan and put on it fire from upon the altar and place incense, and go quickly to the assembly and provide atonement for them, for the fury has gone out from the presence of Hashem. The plague has begun. Aaron took as Moses had spoken and ran to the midst of the congregation, and behold, the plague had begun among the people. He placed the incense and provided atonement for the people. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was checked. Those who died in the plague were 14,700, aside from those who died because of the affair of Korah. Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tent of assembly, and the plague had been checked. Hashem spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and take from them one staff for each father's house, from all their leaders according to their father's house, twelve staffs. Each man's name shall you inscribe on his staff, and the name of Aaron shall you inscribe on the staff of Levi. For there shall be one staff for the head of their father's house. You shall lay them in the tent of meeting before the testimony, where I meet with you. It shall be that the man whom I shall choose, his staff will blossom. Thus I shall cause to subside from upon me the complaints of the children of Israel, which they complain against you. Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and all their leaders gave him a staff for each leader, a staff for each leader, according to their father's house, twelve staffs, and Aaron's staff was among their staffs. Moses laid the staffs before Hashem in the tent of the testimony. On the next day, Moses came to the tent of the testimony, and behold, the staff of Aaron of the house of Levi had blossomed. It brought forth a blossom, sprouted a bud, and almonds ripened. Moses brought out all the staffs from before Hashem to all the children of Israel. They saw and they took each man his staff. Hashem said to Moses, Bring back the staff of Aaron before the testimony as a safekeeping, as a sign for rebellious ones. Let their complaints cease from me that they not die. Moses did as Hashem had commanded him. So he did. The children of Israel said to Moses, saying, Behold, we perish. We are lost. We are all lost. Everyone who approaches closer to the tabernacle of Hashem will die. Will we ever stop perishing? Numbers 18. Hashem said to Aaron, You, your sons, and your father's household with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Also, your brethren, the tribe of Levi, 
the tribe of your father, shall you draw near with you, and they shall be joined to you and minister to you. You and your sons with you shall be before the tent of the testimony. They shall safeguard your charge and the charge of the entire tent, but to the holy vessels and to the altar they shall not approach, that they not die, they as well as you. They shall be joined to you and safeguard the charge of the tent of meeting for the entire service of the tent, and an alien shall not approach you. You shall safeguard the charge of the holy and the charge of the altar, and there shall be no more wrath against the children of Israel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel. To you they are presented as a gift for Hashem, to perform the service of the tent of meeting. You and your sons with you shall safeguard your priesthood regarding every matter of the altar and within the curtain, and you shall serve. I have presented your priesthood as a service that is a gift, and any alien who approaches shall die. Hashem spoke to Aaron, and I, Behold, I have given you the safeguard of my heave offerings. Of all the sanctities of the children of Israel, I have given them to you for distinction and to your sons as an eternal portion. This shall be yours from the most holy. From the fire, their every offering, their every meal offering, their every sin offering, their every guilt offering, that which they return to me as most holy, it shall be yours and your sons. In the most holy shall you eat it. Every male may eat it. It shall be holy for you. And this shall be yours. What is set aside from their gift, from all the wavings of the children of Israel, have I presented them to you and to your sons and daughters with you as an eternal portion. Every pure person in your household may eat it. All the best of your oil and the best of your wine and grain, their first, which they give to Hashem, to you have I given them. The first fruits of everything that is in their land, which they bring to Hashem, shall be yours. Every pure person in your household may eat it. Every segregated property in Israel shall be yours. Every first issue of a womb of any flesh that they offer to Hashem, whether man or beast, shall be yours. But you shall surely redeem the firstborn of man, and the firstborn of an impure beast shall you redeem. Those that are to be redeemed from one month shall you redeem according to the valuation, five silver shekels by the sacred shekel. It is twenty gira. But the firstborn of an ox, or the firstborn of a sheep, or the firstborn of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. Their blood shall you throw upon the altar, and their fat shall you cause to go up in smoke. A fire offering, a satisfying aroma to Hashem. Their flesh shall be yours, like the breast of the waving in the right thigh shall it be yours. Everything that is set aside from the sanctities that the children of Israel raise up to Hashem have I given to you and your sons and daughters with you as an eternal portion. It is an eternal salt-like covenant before Hashem for you and your offspring with you. Hashem said to Aaron, In their land you shall have no heritage, and a share shall you not have among them. I am your share and your heritage among the children of Israel. To the sons of Levi, behold, I have given every tithe in Israel as a heritage in exchange for the service that they perform, the service of the tent of meeting, so that the children of Israel shall not again approach the tent of meeting to bear a sin to die. The Levite himself shall perform the service of the tent of meeting, and they shall bear their iniquity. An eternal decree for your generations. And among the children of Israel, they shall not inherit a heritage. For the tithe of the children of Israel that they raise up to Hashem as a gift have I given to the Levites as a heritage. Therefore have I said to them, Among the children of Israel, they shall not inherit a heritage. Hashem spoke to Moses, saying, To the Levites shall you speak, and you shall say to them, When you accept from the children of Israel the tithe that I have given you from them as your heritage, you shall raise up from it a gift to Hashem, a tithe from the tithe. Your gift shall be reckoned for you like grain from the threshing floor and like the ripeness of the vat. So shall you, too, raise up the gift of Hashem from all your tithes that you accept from the children of Israel. And you shall give from it a gift of Hashem to Aaron the Kohen. From all your gifts you shall raise up every gift of Hashem from all its best part. It is sacred its sacred part from it. You shall say to them, When you have raised up its best from it, 
It shall be considered for the Levites like the produce of the threshing floor and the produce of the vat. You may eat it everywhere, you and your household, for it is a wage for you in exchange for your service in the tent of meeting. You shall not bear a sin because of it when you raise up its best from it. And the sanctities of the children of Israel you shall not desecrate, so that you shall not die. Okay then, (laughs) what do we have here? Remember, Joshua actually thought it was a crime for these people to prophesy. Moses said, you know what? It would be awesome if all the people had this spirit. Clearly, this is not the case. These guys, they come at Moses again for like the same reason. They don't understand the things that are happening. Those fire pans, those have all been turned into a, um, a covering for the altar specifically for people to see, oh yeah, that's right. God selected Moses and Aaron, not us. Oh yeah. Finally, Hashem says he's done. He hits him with the plague. They start killing people. But get this, Moses and Aaron, they drop to the ground. Please, God, no, have mercy. I don't understand. Why not let this plague just sort of rip into these people? Moses gathers the tribes. He says, bring me your stick. Moses makes sure everybody sees what's going on. He puts it in front of the ark the next day. Obviously, there's like something unbelievable happens. It grows and there's almonds and they're like wow this is unbelievable and they take their staffs and they head back and everything works out brilliantly they apologize to Aaron they say dadgummit we can no longer avoid these unexplainable natural occurrences that continue to point towards you you're right Aaron I'm sorry Moses please continue no that's not what they do that's not even close they they just complain some more it's I don't something is not right Okay, so we see how the priests are going to be paid. And in short, we can say that it is very, 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 very good business to be in the service of God. I mean, you see these buildings that these church organizations have. I mean, we are talking about some big money going into this brick and mortar. And I could only imagine that they wouldn't be doing that if the people who were working that organization, they wouldn't be going broke. That doesn't make too much sense. According to God, those people are supposed to be some of the highest paid people in the entire nation. In fact, Aaron, who is the Kohen Gadol at this time, receives 1% of the gross domestic production of the entire group of tribes. I mean, it would be the nation. For sure, it would have to make him the wealthiest man in the area. So we know what happens when there are super wealthy bankers. It's not awesomeness. We know what happens when there are super wealthy politicians. Somehow these guys get super rich. It's not a win. Is there a lot of evidence that it always works out perfectly when tremendous wealth and tremendous power and tremendous influence is sort of centralized in one person? That's it for today. That was an interesting chapter. Need to look into preacher salaries. (laughs) Oh, that's it. The NQE is out.